Hello, and welcome back to my Q&A video series about the Pandas library in Python. And the question for today comes from a YouTube viewer who says, this is something I've read in pbpython.com, and the author uses type category like this. Can you explain to me what does the type category do and how to properly use it? Okay, excellent question. So as always, uh, we will start uh, by importing pandas as pd, and then uh, we need an example data set. So we'll say drinks equals pd.readcsv, and it's um, bit.ly slash drinks by country. And this is a data set of um, alcohol consumption by country. Okay. So uh, drinks.head, and you can see it's, it's one country per row. And let's use the info data frame method, which we have not seen before, to get some more detail on this data frame. Okay, so uh, it tells us about the index. There are six columns. Uh, how many non-null, meaning non-missing values, are there in each column? And it tells us the data types. So we've got int, float, and object. So. Uh, Object usually means a string is being stored, but um, you may not know that you can actually create a pandas series of Python lists or a pandas series of Python dictionaries. In other words, you can store arbitrary Python objects in a pandas series, and pandas basically just stores a reference to that object. Okay, and the, it just calls it type object. Okay, the thing I want to focus on is this memory usage at the bottom, and it says 10.6 plus kilobytes. Okay, now why is there a plus there? Well, this is telling us that the data frame takes at least 10 kilobytes of memory. Pretty small data frame. But why the plus? And here's the reason. Um, because object columns are references to other objects, pandas wants this info method to run fast. So it doesn't actually go out and look at the objects and figure out how much space they take. It actually just uh, figures out how much space the references to those objects takes. So it's saying it's at least 10.6 kilobytes, but it might be a lot more depending upon what's in those object columns. And again, in this case, they're just the strings for country and continent. Okay. So turns out you can actually force pandas to count the true memory usage. Okay. So we just say drinks.info and uh, memory usage equals deep, okay? And you'll see the same stuff, except it will tell us pandas actually looked at the object columns and figured out how much space they were taking, and uh, it says 25.8 kilobytes, so more than double uh, the actual estimate. Now, this takes a little bit longer to run, but it is accurate, okay? Now, you might look at that and think, well, how much space is each column taking, okay? Each series, and you can actually do that. So uh, let's say we actually just use the method drinks.memory usage, okay? And uh, this time, it will tell us the memory usage in bytes, so 1,544 bytes, not kilobytes. Now. The thing this doesn't tell us is just like drinks.info, it does not kind of inspect those object columns by default. So if you want the real numbers, you have to say deep equals true, okay? And now we've got the actual size in bytes uh, used by each of those series, okay? So, uh, and, and one final thing I want to mention about this uh, memory usage um, is because uh, this outputs a pandas series, 
right? Um, this is just the index of the series and these are the values. We can actually say just dot sum and we'll get about 25 kilobytes, which is what we saw up here. Okay. So uh, the bottom line of trying to, what I'm trying to tell you is that object columns can take up a lot of space. So the question is, uh, especially if this was a really large data set and, you know, um, we were storing too much, uh, the, the data frame was growing too, too large. How can I reduce that? How can I be more space efficient, especially with object columns? Well, think about this. What if we were able to store our strings as integers? Because integers are more space efficient than strings. Now, uh, what do I mean by this? Well, think about this, okay? Um, there are only six unique values in the continent series, for example. So drinks.continent.unique series method, and I'm going to sort it. That's just a Python function. And you can see that here are the six unique values of continent. So let's pretend that instead of storing strings, we said, okay, I will store a zero to mean Africa, a one to mean Asia, a two to mean Europe, a three to mean North America, and so on, okay? Now by doing that, we're only storing integers. So uh, just to make sure this is very clear, let's just do drinks.continent, continent.head. So, uh, if this is stored as strings, but if I wanted to store them in as integers, I would just say something like, uh, okay, Asia, that's one, this is two, this is zero, this is two, this is zero, okay? And so on. Now, if we did this, if we invented this system, then you'd still have to store like a little lookup table that said, when I say zero, I mean Africa. So um, uh, we would basically, we would still have to store the strings, but we would only have to store them once, okay? Now, if you like this idea, um, thankfully, we don't have to implement this ourselves because Pandas has created this system for us. There's a category data type, and this was introduced in pandas 0.15 and i'll show you how to convert a column an object column to the category type so we're going to say drinks bracket continent equals drinks dot continent dot as type category okay that's all okay so let's check out the D types to see what we've got now. And you can see that country is still object, but continent is now type category. Okay. And uh, if you, it still looks the same. So if you say drinks.continent.head, still looks the same here. But now notice you've got this thing down here. It says categories six and it lists them. Here are the six categories, okay? And I'm telling you that under the hood, um, it is storing these strings as integers, okay? And here's kind of like a representation of that lookup table. Now I can prove to you uh, the storage. So um, I'm gonna say drinks.continent.cat.codes.head, okay. Let's deconstruct this. Continent series. And then you'll remember from a previous video how when you're like using a string method for a series, you would say like drinks.continent.stir.contains or something like that. Well, with categorical stuff, it's the same way. I say drinks.continent.cat and then there's some other stuff in there. So I can say dot cat dot and I hit tab and there's a bunch of things you can do. Okay, so I'm saying dot cat dot codes, and let's just go ahead and look at the head. Okay, 
And you can see, just like I was saying, 12020, that is exactly how pandas is now representing the continent series as integers. Okay? Now, we talked about doing this to reduce our memory usage. Well, let's take a look. Uh, drinks.memory usage deep equals true. Okay, look at that. Before, continent was over 9,000 bytes. Now it's less than 500 bytes. Okay, now to be very clear, um, instead of storing 193 strings, we're now storing 193 integers that point to a lookup table of six strings that says zero is Africa, one is Asia. So the strings only have to be stored once, the rest is integer storage, thus much more space efficient. Okay. Now, let's try to repeat this for the other uh, um, object column, country. So let's just say drinks bracket uh, country equals drinks dot country dot as type category okay and uh, let's check the memory usage drinks dot memory usage deep equals true and you might have sensed this wasn't going to go very well when we look at country it has now gotten larger why is that well if you remember the country series, every country was a different string. Okay? So we created 193 categories. Okay? So if we say drinks.country.cat.categories, it's an attribute, you'll see there are 193 categories. So previously, uh, before we converted it to a category, it was strings, and we were storing 193 strings. Now, we're storing 193 integers, which are very small, but it points to a lookup table of 193 strings. So we're actually spending more memory than before to store the same thing. So the bottom line here is you use the category data type when you have when you have an object column of strings that only has a few different values, okay? Not a ton of different values. Now, besides just reducing your memory usage, when, uh, for continent at least, okay? It actually speeds up your computations. So if you are working with an object column of strings, and you're doing computations with it, say you're, you're doing a group by with that column, it will actually speed up your operations um, uh, if you use the category data type. So simply converting a column to a category um, will not only save you space, as long as there aren't too many values, uh, unique values, and it will speed up computations. It is such an easy way uh, to make your data frame uh, smaller and faster, okay? Now, uh, as always, um, I want to end with a bonus. And um, to do this bonus, I need to create just a very small data frame. And so I'm just gonna say df equals pd.dataframe. And we'll talk more about uh, how to use pd.dataframe in a future video. Um, but I'm actually gonna pass it a dictionary in which the key is the column name and the values are, uh, it's just a list of values I wanna put in the data frame. So, uh, and you'll see how this looks in a second. One, oh, three, and uh, we're gonna get quality, okay. Uh, list of strings, good, uh, very good, uh, good, and Excellent. Okay, create my data frame and let's print it out. Okay, so I've created a data frame with two columns and four rows. Don't worry so much about this code. Uh, this is just an example data frame. And you can pretend that these, the ID column are like 
ID numbers for some sort of uh, item. Um, so it's a ring or a stone or who knows. And the quality column is a rating of the quality of that item. Okay, kind of makes sense. Uh, what if, and you'll see in a moment why we're doing this, what if I said um, df.sort values quality, meaning I want to sort this data frame by the quality series. Well, how does it sort? Well, it seems kind of obvious. It sorts in alphabetical order. It says excellent, good, good, very good. So E, G, G, V, okay? Now, here's the thing. There's a logical ordering to these categories, right? Um, how can we tell pandas that there is actually a logical ordering? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the category data type and we're going to define ordered categories. Okay, so df bracket quality equals df dot quality dot as type category. And then we're going to say two more things. So we're converting it to type category. We're going to say categories equals, and we're going to say good, very good, very good, excellent. Okay. So we're telling it the ordering, the logical ordering of the categories from like lowest to highest, kind of. That's how it. That's how we specified. And then we say ordered equals true. Okay. So if you look at the series, it still looks the same. Okay. Remember, we didn't we didn't change the sorting in place. So df.quality is still good, very good, good, excellent, just like here. Okay. However, it now tells you for the categories, good is less than very good, is less than excellent. This is now ordered categories. And here's the cool part. When you've defined ordered categories, if you sort things, sort values uh, quality, it now sorts them in logical order. So from good, good, very good, excellent. So it's not sorting by letter, it's sorting by um, the ordering we defined for the categories. And probably the coolest thing about this, in my opinion, is that you can now use Boolean conditions uh, with this, such as df.loc. And what I mean is, let's say I want to see all the rows where the quality is better than good. What rows do I want? df.quality df is greater than good. And I want to see all columns and check that out. We only see the very good and excellent. And it did that. You can now use uh, these comparison operators with the string because the categories are ordered and it understands that very good and excellent are greater than good. Okay? So uh, that's it for today. Um, as always, uh, please click subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Uh, let me know a question or a comment in the comment section below, and maybe I will make a video answering your question. Um, but again, that's it. Uh, thanks so much for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon.